Welcome to our mini broadcast service for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. And I'm going to start by reading the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 13. It's a parable we know quite well, the parable of the sower. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Well, there is a phrase we sometimes use in our family when we are saying something nice to another person and they are finding it hard to receive. And the phrase is this, open your post box. Open your post box so that words of encouragement or praise and affirmation can get to your heart and make a difference. You see, sometimes people have ideas about themselves which are quite negative. You might hear it when golfers speak harshly to themselves after a bad shot or two. Not many of us Brits like flattery. We are often cynical about feeling buttered up. But it makes a difference to us when someone sees us or gets us and then says something to encourage or affirm or praise us. Well, you may or may not need help to open your post box and take a genuine compliment on board. But it seems lots of us do need help to take on board the things that Jesus has to say. And perhaps that is why he told the parable of the sower. Some time ago it seemed to me that it was more helpful to call it the parable of the soil rather than the parable of the sower. Because it seems to me that Jesus wants us to think about our hearts and our lives as soil. His parable makes it clear that there can be brambles and rocks in our hearts and lives, and the soil may have been hardened or pressed down. Rocks stop roots going down, and so can stand for many things, perhaps set patterns of life, or set ways of thinking, sometimes about ourselves, other times about God. And these set ways clash with the news of God's love, with the evidence of his kindness and grace. They're things that stop us trusting God fully. 
weeds and thorns, according to Jesus, can stand for cares and riches, worries and pleasures. Both things we worry about in life and things we think will take away our worries. Both can choke our faith in Jesus. Maybe you have days when you can feel those things. Days when you have no time or desire to hear from God. Days when you feel your faith is dry and shallow and weak. Days when worry or money effectively silence the voice of God in you. Some may know immediately of a rock that is to do with pain and suffering or feeling badly treated. Others may have the same kind of rock but not really be aware of it. Some may be aware of the critical messages they constantly play to themselves. Others may not even have begun to listen to themselves. But if we want to open our heart to what Jesus has to say to us, if we're going to be able to open our post boxes to him, then we need to look at our hearts. You could do an experiment if you had a piece of paper and a pen or pencil with you. By listening to my next sentence and then monitoring and writing down what your response on the inside is. So listen to this sentence and then see what reaction you get. Here it goes. Here it is. God loves you. God is delighted you are in his world. He knows your original design and he longs to bless you. He only wants your flourishing. Let those words settle inside your heart and see what is going on inside. Often you'll find there is opposition to those words. They're contested. You dispute them and argue against them. And if you ask yourself why, you'll find the reasons, the rocks in your heart. It is a fact that God loves us and wants to connect with us, even in this broken and painful and messed up world. But sometimes we just do not want to know. It's worth exploring because at the end of his parable, Jesus says these words, these words about the good soil. This is the person, he says, who hears the word and understands it. They indeed bear fruit and yield in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The parable says that you and I have a role to play in the garden of our hearts. It says that we can improve the soil in our hearts and lives. And it holds out hope that we can bear fruit, really good fruit. And so a prayer, which is the collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, send down upon your church and each person listening to this broadcast the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel and hear the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a song. You unravel me with a melody
God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.